In this video, I'll show you how to create a layout template for all of your future projects. A layout is a file type that is generated by Chief Architect, separate from the plan file that holds the 3D model of your building. The layout is used for creating and printing construction drawings, or blueprints. A layout template file saves all of your preferred default settings, layer display options, and other file-specific information saved in a file that opens when you create a new layout. The purpose of a template is so that you don't have to repeatedly set up your defaults, layers, etc. when you're starting a new project. A layout template can be designed with a border, your company information, a logo, text macros, and other details. When you identify a file as a template, Chief Architect refers to this file for information anytime you open a new layout file. Let's go up to File and to New Layout. As you can see here, Chief has opened up a file that already has a border, some text information, and a revision table in it. Where did it get this file? It's the default layout template file. If we go here to the Edit drop-down menu to Preferences, and then go to the New Plans panel, you can see where Chief is finding the template that we have opened. When I click on Browse, you can see all of the layout templates that Chief Architect has provided. The file that we've opened up is the Profile.Layout file. What I want to do here is create my own template for my own design business projects. So to create my own templates, I'll start with this Profile.Template and customize it for our future projects. First, let's check the drawing sheet size to make sure it prints to the paper size I need. We'll go to the File drop-down menu to Print and Drawing Sheet Setup. This is where you would set up the paper size that you want to use and the orientation for printing. The drawing scale size should always remain 1 inch to 1 inch. You will scale the drawing view when you send it to the layout. Margins can be set here or you can have them populate from the printer you have selected. Once you have the page set up, you may need to make further adjustments to the borders and text. I'll select a size different from what it is to start with. Right now it's using a 24 by 36 inch page. Let's create an 18 inch by 24 inch size template. Now you can see that my border does not fit the page, so I'll need to edit the CAD lines and text. If I try to select the border lines, it won't let me. That's because most of what you see here is not actually on page 1. This information is on the default page template, page 0. So we'll move down to page 0 and make some adjustments. Everything that you place on page 0, you will see on every other page because it is the page template. The border lines are simply CAD lines and you can edit them like any other CAD object. Here I'll use the temporary dimensions that appear when I select the edge of a CAD line. You can learn more about editing CAD lines and using the dimensions in additional online training videos. Then I'll move the title block into place using the point-to-point -point Move tool. And then use the Transform Replicate tool to move it exactly 1 16th of an inch away from my border. For demonstration purposes, I'll simplify the title block by removing the revision table. You can always add it back in whenever you want by going to the Tools drop-down menu to Layout, then select Layout Revision Table. As you can see, there are several options for tables to be added to your layout template. Now I'll finish editing the CAD border lines using my CAD editing tools. As you're editing your CAD objects, be careful not to select the paper edge because you can actually move the drawing sheet area. That's the white area on my screen. If you're trying to select border lines, click inside of the drawing sheet area and drag to select your CAD lines. The text that you see here is simply a text box. If I double click on this, you can see that I have the option to edit the text. In our case, I'm going to delete this and create my own. 
But first, I want to import a couple of images for my logo and my business information. I'll go to File, Import, and Import JPG. Then browse to where I have saved my logo images. I'll select the first one and click Open. Now I'll need to put it into place using the Point to Point Move tool. Then adjust the size using the Object Edit handles. Let's import the second one. Again, go to File, Import, and Import JPG. Select this one and Open. Adjust the edge. I'm going to rotate this one and move it into place. And then adjust the size. Now I'll add text for my company contact information. I'd like to use rich text because you can have multiple text styles and sizes within one text box. Here I'll type in my name, the company address, phone number, and email address so that anyone referring to my construction drawings knows how to contact me. The text will appear according to the text defaults set up for this layout file. If I don't want to use this font, I can change those defaults so that my layout will always use the font that I want and the size that I want because it's saved in my template. Now let's rotate this and put it into place to make sure it fits properly. Then we can customize it to look the way we want. Let's add a page number macro. First, you'll notice that if I go to page 1, you can see a page number here, but I cannot select it because it's actually a text box that is on page 0. If I open the text box, you can see that it is using a macro. Anytime you see percent text percent, that indicates that you're using a macro. Here in the plain text box, you can find macros by going to the M and drilling down to the macro you need. I'll cancel out of here and delete this text so that we can create our own. Macros insert dynamic information relevant to the current plan or layout file. They are particularly useful in layouts for page numbers, drawing scale, and other information. Now I'll create a rich text box for my page number. I want it to fit perfectly inside this CAD border, so with the text tool active, I will trace another rectangle over this one that will open up the text editor so that I can enter text and edit it as needed. I want the text to center justify and I want my page number to start with the prefix a dash. Then I will add the macro for the page number. To find macros in rich text go to the M at the end, go to global, and I will find the page macro under layout info. Then click away from the text box to close the editor. Now obviously the text is smaller than I'd like it, so I'll reopen it, select the text, and change the size to 5 sixteenths of an inch, and use Arial Black for the font. Now when we go to page 1 or 2, you can see that the macro is looking for the page number that is currently displayed. That is what a macro does. You'll notice here that some of my text is blue and some is black. My text defaults are usually set to color the text according to the layer they are on. I want all of my text to be black, so here in my active layer display options, I will select all the layers and change the color to black. Layers and layer settings are saved in the individual layout or plan files. So when you save this layout as a template, we will be saving those layer settings. Next, I'll add a page title. I'll create another text box using my Rich Text tool. I'll go to a macro, go to Global, Layout Info, Layout Page Title. Close it, and then rotate it to move it into place. Neat trick! Move one corner to the corresponding corner of the border where you want to place it, and then move the opposite corner to its corresponding corner. Now it will be perfectly centered. I'll open the text again, 
Center Justify the text and make it larger and bold. Now if I move up to page 1, you will notice that the text is changed. But if I go to page 2, there is no text. This is where your project browser comes into use. Where is the macro we've used getting this information? You will find your project browser here in the right side of your screen. If you don't see it displayed, you can turn it on with the Project Browser button, or you can go to the View drop-down menu to Project Browser. It's a toggle switch to turn it off and on. The Project Browser will show any plans or layouts you have open in the program. Under my Untitled To Layout, you will see the Pages folder. Each of these pages has information built into it. If I right-click on Page 1, and go to Edit Page Information, you will see where you can add a page label, title, description, and comments. The macro that I used is looking for the page title information. The information you enter will also list here in your project browser. Note that on page 1, the original layout that I opened was using the page label for the page number but I have deleted that text box that was looking for that specific information and have used a different macro that is looking for the layout page number. One more thing we can do with macros is utilize the project information in this file. If I go here to the Tools drop-down menu and to Project Information, here is where you can put in client and designer information. I'll add some text here for client as spaceholders. Click OK to close this and then go back down to page 0. Then I'll copy this text box into the next page border using the Copy Paste tool and the Point to Point tool. Now I'll double click on the text box to open up the editor. I'll delete this macro and then go into Macros for the project information listed under Contact Information. First, We'll enter the client's name, and then add a return to go to the next line. Then add the client's address, city, and any other contact information you want on your construction drawings. Then you'll want to add punctuation and spaces between each of your macros. Click OK to check it out. The nice thing about macros is that the text follows the text setting just like any other text. So if I wanted the client's name to be larger or underlined or even a different font, I can do that here in the text editor. Once you have your layout set up exactly as you want it, you can save it as a template. Go to File, Templates, and Save as Template. This will automatically save your file in the Chief Architect Premier Data folder under Templates. However, you can browse to another folder if you wish to save your template there. I'll save this one and name it My18 by 24. It will automatically add the extension dot layout. When you are saving as a template, Chief will ask you if you want to use this as your default template. If you say yes, then each time you go to New Layout, it will open this file. Once you've saved it, you can edit your template easily by opening a new layout, making the changes you need, and then save as template again. This will override the one that we've already saved. Saving a file as a template also places a protection mechanism on the file so that you don't inadvertently edit your template. When you open a new layout template, then hit the Save button, it will direct you to a browser where you will be required to save it as a different named project file. You can change the default templates folder by going to Edit, Preferences, and then to New Plans folder. On a Mac computer, go to the Chief Architect drop-down and to Preferences. For my business, I have created a separate folder specifically for my personal templates. Now when I use the New Layout from Template tool, 
it will take me into my custom folder. Here you can see that I have created several different sized templates for different sized projects. You can create as many templates as you want and use whichever one you need. To use a template that is not designated as your default template, go to the File drop-down menu to New Layout from Template. That will take you into your default templates folder where you can select a different template size for your project. Creating and using templates will save you time and increase your productivity.